Hey guys, I'm going to make another video about Ryan Denlinger that I haven't made. I've just been making these random videos with the desktop recorder lately, so these are things that I might just delete in the future, but I'll just, for now, I'm just putting stuff out there, I guess. Um, I just watched this, and he's being critical of door-to-door -door evangelism, which I don't really want to say whether, you know, it's biblical or not. Well... Well, he goes over the verses that people use to teach that, and I would agree that they're, you know, probably misapplied, uh, taken out of context, twisted. But um, also, you know, Brian Den Brian Denlinger himself, you know, he twists the whole Bible. He has like no understanding really. But you know, there was one verse where you know, go and preach the gospel to every creature, and so basically, you know, there's there's lots of different meth methods, you know, tracks and street preaching and just witnessing the people and and you know i think the door-to-door -door could be one um so i'm not so against that really but he, he comes up with a couple arguments that i really don't like and uh well for one he talks about how people come to the door and they're like frightened and they just want to uh want people to go away or whatever uh, or, you know, how they react, you know, is not good, basically, is what he's saying. But, I mean, people don't want to hear the gospel. Like I said, you know, the gospel is hard to believe. It doesn't matter where you approach them. You can approach them one-on-one, -on -one, you know, at the store or a family member in your home or somebody at their door. They're all going to, most people are going to have the same reaction that, you know, they're offended. They don't want to hear about Jesus. But that doesn't matter that we're called to preach to them. Okay, and but everybody has their own discernment whether you know it's time to move on from a certain person or if if it's if they want to switch methods or whatever. But um, to criticize, to use that as a criticism of a method or something, it's not it's not good because generally, I mean, people, you know, it's it's like he's getting into the easy believism, like the the false church thing himself. He doesn't realize it. And then he also criticizes um, and says that, you know, he talks about Stephen Anderson and Jack Hiles and those easy believism teachers. He talks about how they do door to door soul winning and they, uh, they say that they get like, hundreds of people save like I've complained about before when they don't and uh or they get one one he said they'll say they get like 100 people saved but then like one person will show up at church or something and so he says that we'll see uh so he, he kind of gets himself into some different errors there because it's kind of like he's saying himself that if somebody's saved that they'll go to a church building but yet he refutes the whole church system thing. So, you know, maybe some of them are saved and they're they're just not going to the church. Uh, but, you know, my criticism of those people, of Stephen Anderson, when I complain about the door-to-door -door soul winning and stuff, and I complain about them praying a prayer and saying that people are saved and they are, it's, it's the gospel that they're presenting. It's not necessarily the method of door-to-door -door winning. It's the easy believism gospel. It's, you know, leading them in a prayer. That's what I'm against. Um, that's what creates false converts. But if you go door to door and you present the true gospel, if you present the true gospel to anybody in any situation, it's going to offend them. It's offensive to tell people that they are, you know, wretched, desperate sinners, you know, in, in desperate need of the Savior and to submit their lives to Christ. And, you know, that's a hard thing for people to accept. And, you know, Jesus said that, you know, there's going to be fewer that, that do. And his, so his other critical thing, besides, you know, people's reaction, people not wanting to really listen also, is uh, how, how seemingly uh, non-effective it is. But let us remember the days of Noah. When, you know, he was a preacher of righteousness in Second Peter 2, 5, it says, you know, Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Um, and it suggested that Noah preached for like a hundred years and like only him and his family were, were saved in the flood. And, um, 
And, you know, we can look at examples all over the Bible. We can look at Jesus himself. Jesus went and told people, you know, that he was the son of God and, and, get, and gave them the scriptures and stuff. Uh, and uh, they tried to kill him. And, uh, you know, eventually he was crucified. So, you know, not only do people, not only are people offended by it, but, you know, sometimes, you know, Christians are persecuted because of the message. I mean, it's unpopular, okay, among the world. And so it's going to be rejected. So I don't think that Brian Dillard thanks. It's obvious from all the stuff I've exposed him on, pointed out, and I'll continue to do so, but I mean... I don't think he's really thinking at all. And, you know, I've there was a preacher at a church building before that kind of got on me about things. I was saying on Facebook or whatever and saying to people, you know, talking about homosexuality being a sin and it offended a bunch of people. And he saw comments and stuff and he said, well, you know, I don't think this is effective and stuff. And it's like that's the false church message that, um, you know, we need to make people feel comfortable in their sins and you know just smile and and just love them and that's just and that's just going to lead them to the lord but you know it's you know to truly love them is to tell them the truth to give them the true gospel and uh most of the time a lot of the time it's going to be rejected they rejected jesus himself and he was crucified so it's almost like Denlinger here saying, like, every time we preach the gospel, like, people should get saved or whatever. And, and to get that kind of result, it's going to be compromise. And so they're not getting saved. And that's what Stephen Anderson does. That's why Stephen Anderson says, like, 100 people got saved today. It's because he preaches a compromised gospel. It's not necessarily because of door-to-door -door soul winning, because of door-to-door -door evangelism, okay, door-to-door -door witnessing, whatever you want to call it. So, um, I don't really want to discredit that as a method, um, but that's all. I just want you guys to be aware about that. Think about that. The message isn't popular. The gospel is hard to believe. It offends people. Um, we're not out there to make people feel comfortable. We're not out there to necessarily, you know, make people happy. Uh, you know, you know, we need to have mercy and grace and, and love others, but we, we do not compromise on the message. And so we should expect, uh, rejection. We should expect division. We should expect persecution and suffering. And so Brian Denlinger here, he's getting himself into like a false gospel and, you know, he's just contradicting himself left and right. Also, in this video, he was talking about how he's changed his views over the years. And he's not going to go back and purge his old videos. So, so he's going to criticize people for false teaching or whatever. But he's perfectly fine with leaving up his own false teaching. It's completely ridiculous. You know, I, I know I've got to take the time to purge some of my stuff. I already have. But, you know, it'll be a... <laughs> A lifelong process as long as this uh, as long as this ministry is going on you know I'll go back and refine things and I'd rather have fewer videos and the and for them to be true than to have you know tons of videos with false teachings and leaven all over um, and also that's why I wanted the website so I can have like a definitive thing like a standard and say you know at least on the website, I can have a doctrinal statement or something like that, and I can say, you know, well, if I have changed my view, the first thing that can be changed is the website. And then, you know, the, for me to go over the videos and stuff, sometimes I don't title them so well, or I talk about another subject in, in different videos. I talk about different subjects all in one video or whatever. So I kind of have to go through and listen to the whole thing, and I don't even like really listening to my own videos. But sometimes I do. I'll, I'll just I have to take the time side to do that. But anyways, uh, so I'm overall not okay with leaving things on there. But there's so many other things that I'm doing that I kind of I'm putting that off until a moment when I really get the time to to go through some of those things. But it's you know it's like he has no concern whatsoever for having leaven all over, and he just keeps putting out more and more leaven. So just remember that the gospel is not popular 
And I think that, you know, there's a lot of different methods. As long as the gospel is preached, the uncompromised gospel, you know, as long as you're, you know, giving the gospel vocally or, or written or, you know, any way that can be communicated, as long as it's not compromised, then I don't think that the method, you know, really matters as far as, as far as that, you know, tracks, just witnessing, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. There, there's lots of different different way, ways of getting it out there, but uh, so that's it. Don't expect people. Don't expect everyone to to like the word. Okay, uh, expect them not to really, and rejoice when someone does. So that's it. God bless.